could just hope that it works, I guess. That will be and awesome. And hello, hello. Man, all these drugs. <laughs> hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Topology Tavern podcast. With me, we are missing a person because he is in the middle of nowhere and can't show up today. But I still have the other two. I have Thorn Fingerman. Hi. Yo. I'm here. You are here. Luckily. I'm going to dominate. And we don't need to know about that, Thor. You, yes, you, you do. You can keep that to your personal life. <laughs> oh. I need to make sure it's well known. Oh, yeah, huh? Mm. Today we got me and Finger on the screens. He is doing a test in the Unreal Engine as opposed to drawing Eldritch Abominations in yeah. Photoshop. It's actually Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, this is oh, actually right. you don't Photoshop, Photoshop with a bunch of add ons. All right. All right, so, topic for today. I'm pretty much just going to say the word and let Thor take over for an hour. Uh, NFTs! Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I have very strong feelings about it. Yeah, from what I can tell. Thor doesn't like NFTs. No, you don't. No, I don't. I think I... they're dumb. <laughs> and I'm mostly indifferent about it, so we'll see how this goes. So... Let's get into the very basics in case, you know, anyone doesn't know what an NFT is. Um, essentially, it is unique. And let me know if I'm getting my terminology wrong, because I know the basics, but you're the programming guy here. It's, it's a unique key generated for a piece of material, whether it be something like an artwork or even something like a tweet or anything like that. It's a hash and generated and it can be sold to people. So that even though the object is still up there on the internet, viewable for any number of people, you have the hash claiming ownership of it. I essentially got it right, right, Thor? Yeah. Yeah, basic, you know? It's kind of, uh, in the very basic sense, it's like, hey, uh, you buy this picture and a certain amount of numbers are generated saying that this is the number for the picture. And only you have the right to have the number. Everybody can have the picture, but you can have the number that says you have the picture. Mm -hmm. that, that's essentially what it is. And um, I have some thoughts about them, too. Um, I also kind of think they're dumb. However, I think they're dumb. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where my, my viewpoint lands at the end of this hour. So. Let's start off with how it started, and I think the way it started was probably decent, which is artwork protection, or artwork... Uh, not protection, but was... the ability to sell ownership of digital art. Yeah, I think, if I'm correct, it's kind of like how like you'd sell like a physical painting is kind of like what it was geared towards, if I'm correct. Like, yeah, it was supposed to make it to where you could sell digital artwork. Um, and, you know, even though, just like everything else, and we'll probably get into this later, how everything digital artwork-wise can easily be stolen, no matter how much work you put into it, even if you put thousands of layers of security on it, a Russian will get it eventually. Um, it will always be on... Yeah, I'm Russians. Yeah, pretty much. Um... The artwork will always be stolen digitally. However, having an NFT tag on it means that you can sell it um, to a person and have them actually technically own it, even if it can be seen anywhere. It's kind of actually, it's kind of akin to that thing where you can buy a star. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Oh, that stupid thing where like you can like buy and name a star after yeah somebody. it's like technically you now name and own that star even though it's a fucking star it's kind of actually really similar to that now that i think about it right and a little bit of an off thing uh <laughs> does anybody ever has anybody ever heard about that dude that claimed he owned the moon D <laughs> no <laughs> so uh back when the moon landing happened a lot of countries came together and said you know what no country can own the moon 
You also know, said that about any any astral body, pretty much. Yeah, you can't own. No government can own any like big old chunk of land out in space. Mm -hmm. And pretty good, pretty good thing. You know, you don't want the Americans to, you know, own the moon or anything like that. Yeah. But one crazy guy decided, hey, uh, if the governments can't do it, that means that people can do it. And therefore, oh I claim the moon. <laughs> How'd that, well that go for him? Uh, well, the thing is, he has no legal right to it, but he can basically say anything he wants. Oh, well, yeah. So Anyone just, can like, say anything. He's a local person that says he owns the moon. And technically, that means he does. Te uh, I mean, technically, he doesn't own the moon, but... But who's going to say no? Yeah, nobody can really stop him. And so what he does is he sells acres of land on the moon. And uh, <laughs> oh, he sells them to anybody. And the sad thing is some people spend a lot of money buying pretend land on the moon. Oh, God. I'm not surprised. I I'm yeah. really not. Like, that's totally something I could see a fellow human being doing, and totally something I could see other fellow human beings <laughs> falling for. Yeah, it's not a... It's not a smart thing, but it's a thing that happens. It's a thing. Okay, it's technically smart of him um, to, like, capitalize on the ridiculousness. But, yeah, going back, so that's kind of the star thing. It's kind of similar to NFTs, so I think... That's so that's where it started pretty much. And I think that even if it's kind of weird, it's technically a good thing. Um because being able to do that just means a more comfortable way of achieving money as a digital artist. I don't think I'm wrong in saying that. I think that point is fine about it. It it's a good way for digital artists to get and get out there and sell their work in a, a definitely more secure way i will admit that mm -hmm. um and then I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna just gonna say this and let you go uh and then people started selling tweets yeah so uh to get a little bit more in depth about what an nft is it's mm -hmm. kind of it it creates a hash of numbers and so the way it does that is it goes through and it takes the Ethereum kind of hash uh, thing, that whatever they call it, and that's how it kind of gets you the number. Mm. And so the way it kind of worked after that is people would start selling them on these marketplaces, but then bots or people started making bots so that you could like even tweet at this account and it would create an NFT of the tweet previously. So like... Say Lemoy's tweets on Twitter, uh, he really hates Blender. And I could then go into his replies at this user who is actually a bot. It would take a screenshot of his tweet and oh. then create an NFT of the tweet. So it's like those things where you can do like add a at video download or whatever to download a Twitter video. Yeah, kind of thing. it's like on yeah, it's like on Reddit where somebody goes like, I want to download this video, so they mention a bot. Yeah, or, or, or like find the image, like reverse search kind of thing. Yeah, it's a lot like that. And so people were doing that. And that's when it got a little stupid. Because then people started going around to like the really popular tweets and just claiming them as NFTs. And the way mm. it kind of worked earlier on is there was no protection about this. And so people who got earlier on, they were just claiming tweets and Twitter didn't do anything about it. Um, is there protection now? I thought it was still completely unprotected. Uh, there is slightly, like, some companies are going out there and doing some protections, but others aren't going fast enough. And yeah. this kind of leads into the first and probably one of the biggest reasons I don't like NFTs is it is stolen theft. It's, yeah, uh, like stolen art. If you, if you as an artist don't claim it, someone else will. Yeah, so early as early as uh, late February, people started uh, going onto ArtStation, finding pretty 3D art or pretty 2D art, and then just creating NFTs of that art. And these well-known artists who were either like concept artists for game companies or uh, storyboard artists who were doing like art in their free time, they were getting a lot of their stuff stolen. And people were just like, they couldn't do anything about it because once an NFT is created for an image, 
you can't do anything about it. It yeah. is that image. Weird. So, how easy, like, when it's not something on Twitter, how easy is it to create one? Create the, so, get the actual NFT? The way it kind of works is you, right now, uh, you can only ever really do it through a marketplace. Mm -hmm. And the big marketplaces, like, uh, I think the biggest one is called the Foundry. And it's like the one that celebrities sell NFTs on. It's the one where like actual artists sell NFTs on. Mm -hmm. And there's also less reputable ones. So like the less reputable ones, you literally go in there, create an account, and uh, you can just steal. And you don't have to steal necessarily. necessarily but you just kind of like okay, I want NFT of this. And so it creates an NFT with what you give it. Mm -hmm. that's, that's so weird. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird, especially because like, like I said, with ArtStation is people are just going there to the less reputable places. They're not going to the higher end art like places. They're going mm -hmm. to less reputable like sell them for five dollars a piece and just like okay uh i now create an nft of this concept art for borderlands <laughs> yeah i can yeah, see some so issue with that. that yeah people are just doing that and uh people are just like stealing artwork from even games and stuff like uh one of the bigger stories is this guy that he had a game that got pretty popular but uh his big thing was he uh what is it? He got a bunch of 2D artists from the internet to like submit uh, 2D pixel art. Mm -hmm. And so what he did is, since he technically owned the pixel art, uh, he just started creating NFTs of all of these arts that were well that were made by well-known people in the uh, games industry. I'll try to find exactly what it is and link it to you guys, but it was kind of one of the shadier things, because... He didn't do anything illegal, but he definitely didn't do anything legal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's and weird. And it's also it's... a thing where uh, once you create the NFT, the artist can't claim their ownership. So the way an NFT kind of got popular is when you sell something as an NFT, a percentage goes to the original artist, no matter mm -hmm. who is sold to who. So, like, I create an NFT of Finger Man. That's right, Finger Man. You're an NFT now. Oh, Your personality. <laughs> oh no. That's crazy. Yeah. So I create an NFT of Finger Man and I sell it to a guy for fifty bucks. I get the whole fifty bucks. Then mm -hmm. he sells it to a guy for two hundred dollars. I can get a percentage of the two hundred dollars. Uh... That's how it started getting popular. Ouch. Yeah. And so, as you can see, when somebody steals an NFT and they sell it, that's it. It's gone. It's out there. It's also kind of led to uh, another interesting thing about uh, the way they're doing the encryption is it's an open source kind of thing. So if I sell something and I could actually view the entire uh, tracking of who sold to who of this original image. So basically somebody could steal the art, sell it to somebody, and they can get sold 50 times. And you can just watch every single person buy and sell this item. Yeah, it's super weird. Are there any... So obviously this sounds... At first it would just be a really shitty thing for artists, but I can eventually see this becoming a really big issue. So are larger corporations and even government for... Like, are they trying to start to regulate it? Or is it? are they just uh, saying, we can't do that? It's a very... It's a non-governmental thing because mm -hmm. there's no real reason or regulation to why they would do this mm -hmm. it's basically based off of like the blockchain technology it's an unregulated kind of thing but it's open source at the same time so there's nothing illegal happening it's just people are using it for different purposes true but because it's now being used to claim ownership like surely they can something can be done at that point 
uh stuff can be done like you could uh you could actually like say if you were big enough like uh this is actually happening with games where they're getting nfts stolen of like their concept art and stuff yeah like i could see that uh, being a really companies big like thing. they're going after they're going after the theft the thieves and everything but again once it's created you can't really do anything Yeesh. so somebody else owns it but you can go after the guy that created it well at least that's like that's the main people you want to go after but still god yeah yeah uh god another fucking crazy one is uh this uh this company i can't remember which one it's one of the larger ones though i don't want to throw a name under the bus without being 100 percent on it so mm -hmm. uh it's a company that they do nfts and they basically did a thing where instead of using uh ethereum which is the currency used for creating and trading nfts they were allowing you to buy them with a credit card E no. So people were putting credit cards onto this site where you can spend tens of thousands of dollars. And they were just having an account with access to a credit card and it was a bunch of people were getting accounts broken into because they didn't have something like two factor authentication. People would break in, trade all the NFTs to a different person, uh max out the credit card buying nfts from other people yeah and then they would just try to get it on as much as they could before they got uh stopped yikes and so the way that kind of fucked everybody else or the people especially that had the nfts that they were keeping in their account is once it's sold you can't get it back yeah it's no you longer can. yours you don't have the hash you don't have the number that proves it's yours but you can still see the guy that sold it and the guy that he bought it from and all this crazy shit. So you could watch your stolen work get oh. sold off like 50 times in an hour. And you can see the guy who currently has it, but they can't do anything about it. That is... Ouch. Yeah, it's kind of... That's one of the other kind of bad things about it is, you know, it doesn't really make it difficult to be in a dirtbag on that. Yeah, definitely. Now, uh, yeah. if eventually was this was to become regulated, do you think it would be a good thing at that point? I don't know, because I'm not an expert in this. But to me, it's just like they try to do something too quickly, and nobody had any idea what it was, and it just got so big so fast yeah like maybe if there was some other like line in history where like they figured it out a lot earlier they did all this crazy shit and now it's it's harder to steal but i i have no idea how they would go about doing that Yeesh. yeah yeah because i and only heard the surface level about all this i didn't even realize I originally heard of NFTs earlier in the year because they started getting bigger and bigger. People mm -hmm. were selling like uh, stupid stuff, like um, Nyan Cat. Like somebody sold. Yeah, NFTs I know someone bought Nyan Cat. Uh, like overly attached girlfriend. That early thing from like the early two thousands of YouTube. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, she started selling NFTs of herself in the videos. So okay, that's silly, you know, but not not douchebaggy. <laughs> Yeah, it's just kind of like it kind of became a thing where people were just like creating NFTs of popular things and selling them. No. And then the brands got into it. And yeah. so you can buy Charmin toilet paper NFTs and KFC <laughs> NFTs. Oh my god. Yeah. That's a, a whole other thing. You... Oh, you hear that? Motorcycle. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's a sports car. Oh, oh yeah, you live in Irvine now. Yeah, I live in a lot Irvine of rich on the main road, yeah. It's it's a lot of fancy cars that I will never be able to afford in my fucking life. Oh, those rich people. Yeah, it's 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 fine. Christ. But uh yeah, another bad kind of thing that happens is uh the way this whole thing kind of works is the when you create a hash because it's decentralized it has to go out to all of the different connected servers in order to get authenticated. Mm -hmm. So basically what would happen is if you and me sold an NFT, I created one, you bought it, and I gave you the rights to it or whatever the hell yeah. you do with it. 
And at that point, uh, a bunch of servers around the world start spinning up. And they start checking numbers and authenticating and doing all the stuff that they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And the way it kind of ends up is uh, NFTs are incredibly bad for the environment because they just use so much energy right. to be created. Okay, I know that totally makes sense. Server... Yeah, especially worldwide, given how many servers there has to be for that. Server environmental costs definitely will become a thing. It's, servers, even the most efficient servers that. are not healthy. Yeah, so it's like if one person sells NFT, this is a super broad thing, but like uh, earlier on, people were saying like the cost of like a marketplace selling nfts for like a day is the amount of like energy a house would use in a year i can see that and because a lot of these places these servers are just using energy not created through clean energy means that's mm -hmm. also just like pumping pollution into the air yeah. so you're getting the energy getting burned and it's just even even more demand it's just it's so weird that to be fair i i know obviously it w will be pumping out that much more shit into the atmosphere how much how drastic is it like obviously any service like steam servers how much pollution do things like steam servers cost even if they're trying to be as green as possible a server center unless they're in a country like i think norway it's almost 100 percent that they can't be only green powered they have to be using fossil fuels at some point with the amount of demand they have so i'd, I'd be curious to look at an actual like quantifiable chart of like a more populated server versus an, the nft servers and see like obviously it's not going to be good but exactly how bad is it compared to all the servers that are running constantly for the past 30 fuck 40 50 fucking years well i mean a lot of them are based off the a lot of servers don't really exist anymore they're all based off of like amazon web service yeah, which true. are just servers that a lot of people connect to all at once and they're all around the world and they have a certain amount of guarantees and so a lot of them are just like amazon web servers google servers that kind of thing mm -hmm. even like basically if you play a game on a server it's probably like an amazon web server true and so it doesn't it's just adding up to it so when nowadays say there were no nfts we would still be having a ton of usage because a lot of servers get but it's just like adding on it's just constantly adding on to it and because people keep doing it people keep creating them they just get crazier faster yeah that's just so and there are some definitely good reasons why nfts exist i mean like yeah if they're if they were used properly and can, regulated they'd be awesome a lot of people can have uh like really cool things that are happening with nfts like i don't know if you know this or heard of this guy but a guy called beeple on the internet uh oh, he does he does pretty crazy cg shit mm -hmm. all the time and every single day he posts a daily cgi uh scene yeah and for i think his like 5,000th day of doing it in a row he actually created an nft of all of his uh crazy shit oh. and i think it sold for like 69 million dollars hell yeah yeah dude his shit is fucking nuts i can't <laughs> nah yeah uh if you if anybody's watching fucking what look up people his shit is nuts it's every single one is a masterpiece and he makes one a day every day never skipped a day yeah and he has videos out there like explaining his kind of workflow and it's insane he's it is, like it's playing nuts. he's playing with 3d legos almost but it's, it takes an amount of mastery that is insane yeah i can't like <laughs> to be fair it's a different kind of artwork but like i'm starting on a new personal project and I did just the basic math and scribble like, okay, this should be done in about two and a half years. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking one a day, and they look so good. Even if they're small and like basic, every one looks so amazing. And he never yeah. constricts mm -hmm. himself to one art style either. That's the coolest thing. No, he does a bunch of crazy shit. Like, uh, I think the way he kind of does it is he has like a drive filled with just a whole bunch of shit. Like, he has a bunch of models and a bunch of different things you can do. Oh, yeah. He has uh, like a metric shit that's on greeble kits, prop kits, everything like that. Yeah. A, a, sometimes, occasionally, he will say, like, yeah, he did the mocap for this one thing or he modeled this one part of this asset. But a lot of it is kind of like adult Legos to an insane degree he's he's a more oh, well i'm not trying to detract from how amazing it is but he's more of a professional set dresser yeah um but what a what a day <laughs> that's put anything yeah. like critique him for anything you want him to but if you suffer or end it with in one day every day it's it's mind-blowing <laughs> it's just crazy anyway um I think that's pretty much nfts it's just nuts to hear all that. yeah um we can start to transition i figured we have a smoother transition but we can transition into the second thing which is selling artwork and how to actually try to protect your artwork and how fucking impossible it is to actually protect your artwork online uh, it's just yeah. starting with let's start with the most basic thing anyone in person can do to protect your artwork. Let's put a watermark on it. Yeah. That uh, doesn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, make sure uh, people know it's yours. Yeah, I mean, the the point of a watermark, a lot of times a lot of people will say, you know, that it's to protect your artwork. It's mainly to help people find your artwork. Um when you you know you've probably done this a thousand times is you see a comic an image or anything like that and if it has a watermark on it obviously you can okay now i know who that who made that and i can go look at them and follow them that's the main point of a watermark because it is extremely no matter how much you complicate it even if you make it a tiling texture that is opacity that's opaque or across the whole image there are AIs and learning uh, AI machines that have learned to get rid of basically any type of watermark. It doesn't matter how much you complicate it. Yeah, it's a uh, like people just make websites where they just remove watermarks. Mm -hmm. There's and a ton of it them. It became a thing. Yeah, it became a thing with like, uh, like art accounts just like stealing art from artists. And sometimes if there's a watermark, they'll either crop it or they'll just remove it. It doesn't mm -hmm. take. A lot of effort at all to remove a watermark like you can buy if you look up just watermark remover you can buy a subscription to sites that like are no matter how complicated the watermark is it'll be removed basically instantly yeah and even then like you with like photoshop could remove a watermark pretty yeah. easily like even if it's the ones that are like diagonal lines like the, the kind of stuff you see in like getty images and stuff you can still remove those requires more work but you can still remove them yeah uh there are a few other ways you know you can kind of protect your art yeah there are a few um obviously having your artwork on more of a trusted and protected site does sometimes help a little bit um especially if you so if there's basically no more way you can protect an image unless you use some uh, really heavy plugins on your website or a website that specializes in doing that. Like there's ways you can make it to where it's very hard to, you know, just extract an image um, besides just like screenshotting your screen and then cropping it. Um, but besides that, there's not yeah, much you can it, do. Uh, doesn't ArtStation have a thing where... No, it's not ArtStation. It's like some other... Uh show your work kind of thing where it just doesn't allow you to save yeah there are a couple like that they embed it in um obviously whatever plugin they're using and it makes it much harder to um to get to it you can't use you can't just right click and save image uh you can't use firefox's view page info extract um pngs 
um, with videos, there's a lot like that. It's a lot harder to extract a video, but as anyone who has looked up YouTube downloader knows, then there's not much you can do at the end of the day. Um, images and videos are just really hard to protect just because of how yeah. everything works. I mean, it's also a thing with, uh, this kind of does lead into it a little bit more is, uh, when people just like post a game, there's nothing you can really do to stop somebody from just downloading it and just rehosting it somewhere. Oh, totally. Yeah. There and, basically uh, is nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think, I think it's pretty insane how much it happens to some studios too, where people just like, uh, they'll rip all the models out of a game and just like resell them. Oh, totally. Or, uh, even just like use them in their own shit. No matter how much you try to protect it or overcomplicate your files, unless hold on unless you are using a completely proprietary modeling software completely proprietary oh god damn it um I can put this off screen yeah completely proprietary modeling service completely proprietary like file formats completely proprietary like even coding language there's always going to be a way to get the shit out of your games and it's almost always using a tool made in russia yeah a lot of some places don't really uh have any rules against it either mm -hmm. like i don't expect like a guy who lives in like spain to get in trouble if he rips uh like a blizzard asset out of one of their games. no and i mean as much as people try to fight it like um the one that i've used not to steal but to mod um I play a lot of Grand Theft Auto 5, and I like to mod Grand Theft Auto 5, and I like to mod, you know, a lot of tiny things about it. So I use a program called Open for, surprise, surprise, made in Russia, that completely unlocks all the files for the game. You can modify literally anything. And as much as Rockstar has tried, they can never do anything to stop them from doing that. It's a completely legal ser uh, software in America because there's nothing they can do about it because it was made and is still hosted in Russia. <laughs> yeah uh another thing is like even if you find the guy that's stealing your work uh you're not gonna be able to really do anything about it because either a the dude doesn't live in your country or b if he does live in your country you're gonna have to go and sue the guy for some amount of money that you deem worthy dragon get a court who probably lives in a different state, and even if he doesn't live in a different state, he might live in a different county or city, and that just kind of piles on to the headache of it. Mm -hmm. it like, it's it's if, not fun to try to sue people over stuff like that. Yeah, like if I stole the Moises art, he would need to sue me uh, in LA because he has to... Well, he actually he could file suit in his city or whatever. Yeah. But then they would need to come to an agreement of all this crazy shit about court. He would have to come up with a number that quantifies Yeah, you know, the coming damages up with the number to qualify damages. Yeah, like say I stole one of his models, but he was about to sell that exclusive NFT for go, just bring it back in. <laughs> sell that NFT and he expected to get $10,000 for it. Then he can try to sue me for $10,000. But if I wasn't, then now I have to create a number out of my ass that will hold up in court. Yeah, and then he also has to uh, realize that it's expensive to sue people. It is very expensive to sue people. And it's expensive to get sued, but it's more expensive to get to sue people. Mm -hmm. That's why typically when you're suing people, you also include the price of your suing them and how much they have to pay you. Yeah, uh, what is it? There's also, god, that whole thing with patent trolls, where, <sighs> yeah. uh, yeah, they'll just, like, they'll get the rights to a very broad patent. Like, one of my favorite ones was, like, some guy somehow got the, uh, ability to, like, he, he got the patent for, like, sending information between two computers. Mm -hmm. It was a very broad patent, and the way it kind of worked out is he could basically go after anything. Yeah, he could do whatever he wants. Yeah, he can go after anything online. And so what he would do is he would just file suit against any large company. Like, even small companies, but just any large company he can get his 
like legal team to go after and he would sue them for like he would sue them for nine thousand dollars and he would always file suit in uh i think it was texas because texas has like weird laws that say you don't have to live in the state to file suit there Mm -hmm. so the dude lived i think in california and he was filing a suit in texas to a company that is run in new york yep (laughs) but you can do that yeah, you can do that in Cal- in the United States. It's There's such all a weird kinds thing. of weird shit you can do. Like, we're going off a little bit of a mini tangent, but um, SCP, the SCP Foundation, the giant, giant website for horror writers to talk about stuff. Um, mm. I don't know much of the details. I supported it on Kickstarter to try to help them out. But essentially, some random-ass Russian dude did something, and he got ownership of the brand, the name, the website, and the merch control in Russia. Just completely, he now owns what? the SCP Foundation in Russia. What? Like, just that's a, sh- I, straight up that. That's um, a huge thing, yeah. Yeah, that's a very huge thing, and so they put out a Kickstarter to um, get, like, super high-tier international lawyers, because they're like, um, bitch, that's our website. <laughs> like, that's our everything. And it's still going, it's going decently well for them, and they were able to kind of push back, but it was hard, and they he just got away with it, and he made a lot of money selling bullshit merch and shutting down legitimate things and doing all this extra shit. Like, yeah. it's, it's crazy what you can get away with when it comes to exploiting your country, your zones, and your laws. Like, it's it's horrifying, honestly. Yeah, uh, this whole, like, back to the guy that was, like, uh, doing patent trolls is the reason why he would file for, like, $9,000 is it's, like, at the key amount where that a lot of companies will just settle. Yeah. Because they don't want to have to send a lawyer who costs, like, so $11,000 a day mm-hmm. to uh, the middle of Texas and have him duel it out with this one dude who's probably not even going to show up. Exactly, yeah. It's just completely not worth it for them. Yeah, and so people will settle, and then what it does is it strengthens the case against other people. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, you just get to the point where they just go around just being dicks to people. Patent trolls are probably one of the worst people you can meet on the internet. Yeah, pretty much. But Um, that's up there with people that steal art from people. Yeah, no, that is... It's... It's... It's fucked. That's honestly what it comes down to. Luckily, I've never had any of my work stolen because I focus more on the uh, programming side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, luckily, and... I've, I've never had anything of mine stolen, both because of Well, my... that's because you suck. Oh. 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 Well, Brownie first of all, fuck you. <laughs> Second of all, um, it's because since I... Um, even though it's not quite my job, what I do on the internet for to show my art Oz is mainly modeling. Um, not so much, you know, my, I, I do renders and stuff, but you know, nothing that it, it's, it's a renders of a game environment. Like you can't really use that for anything. I mean, you technically could, but you really wouldn't, you'd want to steal my models. And I have the thing where I just don't make money off of my models. I put them all up for free on Sketchfab and I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of downloads. So it's not. You know, no one to go around stealing my work, but I'm gonna. Well, I mean, fucking... also, your work though that you put for free is kind of shitty. Like the what is it? The million poly bullet. Okay, that, that was a meme. Fuck you. <laughs> I knew that was shit. That's why I yeah. put it up there. I uh, have some for... decent like content packs up there with nice models that I did spend yeah. time on. <laughs> Fuck you. For future reference, uh, Lemoy's he modeled a bullet and made it like a million polys. No, no, I didn't on. make it a million polys. I gave it an 8K texture. Oh, he gave it an 8K texture. So basically, uh, if you put it into anything, it's gonna it'll die. Just crash it. <laughs> I could bring it up really quick, actually. All of your, all of your VRAM will just be absolutely gone. It'll just be non Let's go to Sketchfab. Um, but I do, I do sell like content packs of like industrial things. I have that steampunk camera that I'm not proud of, but still sold a lot. Or downloaded a lot. Yeah, this thing. Give oh, it ten years thing. to load the textures. <laughs> it's wait. It's loading. Still loading. Oh man, yeah. And there we go. Look at this bolt. Oh, this heckin' yeah. bullet. And so if you and put that in your game. And remember, 
<laughs> this so is a downloads. bullet. <laughs> There's yeah. 780 people who were like, why are my game <laughs> render going so slow? <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going completely off topic to why Lemoyne is an asshole for doing this. <laughs> uh, people will download the bullet, and it being a bullet, you normally use more than one. And so people will drag in, I don't know, 10 bullets for a scene just to see how they look. And all of a sudden you have 10 models with 8K textures <laughs> killing your computer. Okay, but I have some good ones up here. Like I, the shitty version of this is downloaded way more. It pisses me off. But I have some like really cool guns for sale that are like optimized and everything. I have a pack of industrial stuff that's optimized. Like don't, don't don't call me a complete asshole i have this which apparently he's so off topic um apparently parts of this uh were used as a grievous source for making nuclear weapons in a french documentary about north korea uh and so my name's on that documentary <laughs> interesting interesting it's interesting. very interesting um but Yo, wrapping bro, around that, with sketchfab i'm gonna fucking wrap this around like a pro i'm gonna talk about stealing models from sketchfab and marmoset viewer because that's actually something we had to talk about on the 3d modeling mm. server a little bit ago mm. so i was yep. um i don't remember where i was but i got tagged um asking if i knew any way to help and this is a problem i knew has been an issue for a while but that's just kind of reminded me like oh crap people suck hey they're from russia they suck as well um not people from russia hackers from russia suck um but i got tagged and they were asking for help. And what it was is this person who is not a small artist. They're actually a pretty decent artist and well-known on ArtStation. Let me, um, so I'm not a complete asshole. Let me give them some credit because they make yeah. some really cool work. If you've been on ArtStation, you've seen their work a couple of times in like the um, front page. If, yeah, if you ever go to like the trending uh, yeah, thing, their stuff they will be there. It, it's always there. Why is Dash? There we go. Um, I think I did like the artwork because I knew I'd want to reference in the future, but they made a fan artwork of a really badass looking Doom gun. I don't know if it was an original gun um, inspired by Doom or if it was actually the super shotgun. Um, You're going to show it on stream? Yeah, I'm, ugh, I didn't like it. Fuck. Um, Thord, can you try to find that? Oh. Look, look up in chat and try to try to find it. But essentially they had a marmoset viewer of the gun you know because marmoset viewers kind of freaking cool you can see the model and turn around so it's like sketchfab except it looks better essentially what had happened is that they found that their model was extracted from marmoset viewer and being sold on this website and that's just a problem that comes with things like sketchfab and marmoset is you know sketchfab is a lot easier because they literally have a way to sell and download models for free meaning that the content in the viewer has to be like it's just an fbx or an obj being displayed they're not doing anything to really protect it and so it's not that hard for people to make a webhook that will steal the model from it and the textures and everything um in fact there's actually in sketchfab and er, sketchfab labs there is a model um Thing you can interact with the model in more detail and i almost guarantee you that has less protection and lets people download stuff through it it's not so much an issue with the marmoset viewer but it still is because even though you can't download directly the marmoset viewer so in theory it's in its own you know proprietary form that makes it harder to download people are gonna find a way to do it and that's what happened here is some russian website a big one as well um went and stole his model their model i don't know about it and it concerned them because the model had been stolen. They had never sold the model to anyone, but they had been waiting to sell it. And now they went to go sell it, but they were really concerned because they're selling exclusive rights to this entity or individual, but anyone on this Russian website can download the model. And so his question was, Does, is my artwork still protected? Am I allowed to sell exclusive rights even though it's been sold? If you have this thought, don't worry, you're protected under... Um, Creative Commons attribute, which basically just means that even if someone steals your artwork, you can still sell exclu exclusive use to it. There's actually a lot of good things about Creative Commons. We might talk about that later. Um, 
but it's kind of fucking annoying that no matter how much you trust something like Marmoset Viewer, it can be stolen. And then if you do enough looking, you can easily just find it on another website for free. Some of them just give you a virus, but that website, they tested it out on a virtual machine and it actually did give them the model, the textures and everything that came with it. And it's kind of fucking annoying because there's nothing you can do about it. If you use Marmoset Viewer or, or Sketchfab, yeah, your artwork can be stolen and you can't do anything about it. I mean, you can like m make it really hard to find, but then obviously, you know, it's not gonna yeah, be fun. Yeah, but also uh, Marmoset is pretty well used by the industry to show off your work. Mm -hmm, that's the I thing. mean, shit, like if you're doing game assets, chances are if you're showing it off, it's a Marmoset view exactly. of your asset. Here we go. Oh, and for, yeah, for people that don't know, a Marmoset or Oops. Marmoset is basically a program that it lets you create basically a 3D turnstile of your model. And so you can view it from different angles mm -hmm. with a flat light source and you can view the different maps that you put onto it. It's really it's really cool and it's really helpful for like showing how like good you are as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the artwork by the way. Like this is what I'm saying. This this guy person I can't actually know. Like if you've been on ArtStation in the past year or two, you've seen some of these renders on the front page because they're just that fucking cool. Um, but this Doom inspired shotgun, it looks down like it was sounds like it was based on a concept art. Um, uh, yeah, it was stolen. And um, I think I have a couple things in here that I have a Marmoset viewer just in case no one knows what it is. I think Alan used it at Sketchfab. I think he's used uh, Marmoset in the past, though. Yeah, uh, let's sketch that. Let's see. That's a video. That's still a video. That said, I had a tumble. I know he's, is he? I know this, I know Alan. He's a really good artist. You should go follow him. He makes some really fucking cool stuff. Um, You can just show him a sketch fab and show him that. Yeah, oh, here we go. Okay, so what he's showing now is a Marmoset view. And like it appears to be, it's literally a cool thing where you can view an entire model all around. Mm -hmm. And you can break down all the textures that are in it and everything. And, you know, well, I'm giving a little bit of shade that Marmoset doesn't do enough to protect the assets being used by him. Marmoset view is really freaking cool. It runs super well and it uses... I think he uses pre-baked lighting and a texture. That's uh, how it runs so smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, well, another thing is you can create a Marmoset view and you can put it on a website and you can just have people view it on their phone. Yeah, it works super well on any platform. Unlike, Ske I love Sketchfab, but their mobile yeah. kind of sucks. Um, yeah, and Marmoset's great. But just be ready that if you do use it and you plan on selling it, or don't want it to be out there in the world, it's not going to happen. If it gets any kind of attention, like 30 likes, 300 views, maybe Alan scraped away from this one, but if you get any, like, 300, three figures in the likes on ArtStation and you have a Marmoset viewer, your shit's stolen. Easily. Yeah. Like, there's now, I looked it up, there's programs you can find that do it for you. Oh, Literally, really? yeah. I While you were doing that, I was looking up how easy is it? programs are out there already oh my god and all it does is it just rips the model and it oh. gives you the maps too jesus is... and you can say we're, we're talking about mama said is not here um octavian he actually um removed it from here for that exact reason he he, he used marmoset viewer on everything but he removed it because he didn't want a shit being stolen which is a shame because i love to tumble these models because they're so freaking cool yeah some people uh you don't like if you're not huge and all you're doing is kind of like just showing off your work you don't really need to worry about it but if you do it in any serious degree and you constantly yeah. give marmoset views to all of your models that's when it gets shitty because some people i know they post everything they do on ArtStation to be like hey look at this this is cool and mm -hmm. sometimes they use marmoset for the really cool shit and i was like man after uh, that guy came forward like, hey, they're stealing my work. I'm like, man, I know a lot of artists that this could happen to. Yeah. I'm like, we can't have nice shit. <laughs> we 
Because if you want to show off your stuff in like super nice ways, everything you do that's fancy gives hackers an opportunity. Um, 360 degree photos are another thing. Um, if anyone wanted to steal my artwork, that's probably a way they can do it because in my environments, because I do environment, I use, um, I shouldn't have closed art station. I use a 360 degree pano, which works super well um, when it comes to art station. Art station has really good support for it. But I mean, in theory, that also gives, you know, anyone who wants to steal my work that much more opportunities to take a screenshot of the panogram and then not have it show up in like reverse shirts, reverse searching. They can just take a picture and like take a picture like this. And then if I try to reverse search any of my posted images, I won't be able to find it. Yada, yada, yada. That's another thing. Reverse search your name, your alias and your images every once in a while. You might find some interesting stuff. Yeah, I found people because so I used to <laughs> I used to make some stupid photoshops and eventually they started making their way to other places. Oh, yeah. Like I, <laughs> I've sent you them before. Uh, here, I'll send them to Lamar and he can show them to you guys. But, uh, you know, I used to go around and I used to just like Photoshop stupid shit mm -hmm. like uh, it will take me a second. Let me find where did I put you? <laughs> oh god, I know that laugh. About to be some really stupid shit on a screen, guys. Oh boy. Um, but I one? found <laughs> I found this one just kind of floating around on a Reddit, on a subreddit of like shitty photoshops. Hmm. And I asked, I reached out to the dude, like, hey, where did you find this? He goes, oh, somebody posted it on Discord. <laughs> and I asked where, and it wasn't any Discord I'm on. So somebody on a Discord I'm on where I posted it, saved the image, and then posted it to another Discord. <laughs> what the fuck? Well said. <laughs> I call it baby float. Oh, of course you do. Oh, it's funky. But yeah, no, that's that's entirely the thing. Things go places. Like, uh. hold on. I think, I think one time I like posted something and I'm like someone like posted it to Reddit, but I like asked them like, "Yo, can you not do that?" And they didn't. And they removed it. It's like, oh. Um. <clears throat> let's see. Let's see if I can find it. I one of my models I I posted on Sketchfab got used for a really stupid video. <laughs> Eh, that's not worth it. But yeah, I know some guys that they uh, they they're really popular with their stuff, and it gets just like taken all the time. Like uh, I know a guy that he's a uh, a comic artist, and oh, so boy, yeah. a lot of his comics they just get taken. Of course, yeah, they just get posted every anywhere and everywhere. Like he, uh, I think he has an Instagram, but he mostly does Reddit ones, and so he'll post it on Reddit. Somebody will screenshot it and then they'll post it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that also leads to another thing of, uh, you know, where people take stuff and then just modify it slightly and then just kind of re-upload it. Yep, trying to get past the reverse search. And yeah, like works. I've seen people sometimes uh, they take images and just like mirror them or reverse them. Mirror them, reverse them, Darken maybe them, adjust them. the contrast or hue a little bit. Um, and that works a lot of times. Um, yeah, it does, because, like, whenever you're looking for, like, if you ever want to see if anybody's, like, posting your shit, you can use Google Image Search. Or and 10i. you can reverse search it. Or 10i, yeah. And it'll scour the internet for like images, and if you have a unique enough thing, it'll actually find the image. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually done that before, where I've looked it up, and I'm like, oh man, I can't find anything about this. But I was so sure that I'd seen it before, what I had done is... I got the image, went into Photoshop, did just a mirror, and then uploaded it to that, and then I could find it again. Yep. I was like, okay, this dude just like took the image from this guy's work and just reversed it, and all of a sudden it's his original thing that you can't find online. Yep. Uh, they're getting better about that nowadays. Um, Google not so much, but 10i is pretty good about finding reversed, flipped, and color changing stuff. Um, even, even getting past watermarks, which is cool. Um, cause that's another thing. What, as much as I said watermarks don't protect your image, at least do still watermark them, 
that way, if, you know, some really low effort people, because that's a thing. We're talking a lot right now about the people who put effort into stealing shit. A lot of people don't. Like, yeah. people would literally just take an image, fucking yeet their logo onto it, and then re-upload it. Even if there's still the original <laughs> watermark, they'll just leave it there. Yeah, we see it not as much here on a 3D kind of forum, but mm -hmm. occasionally when you're on, like, a 2D subreddit... Especially uh, web comics and stuff like that. Web comics too, where people will just, like, they'll take it, and they're like, hey, I drew this. <laughs> it's like as, as the as the web very popular meme and webcomic go you made this or i made this you made this you made this i made I this, this. <laughs> like it just has like the the, the watermark like their things like superimposed on top of the other one that you can still like blatantly see the other one oh the, like sometimes they do that sometimes they don't and like in the bottom right corner will be the original water, watermark and then in the left corner is a new one and they're like dude you didn't even put the effort of putting a black box on the other watermark mm. yeah people are really lazy and that is one of the good things you could take advantage of you know um at the end of the day if you make something popular and really you know really popular there are only people that will do anything to erase your name on it. If you don't, people are too lazy. <laughs> so to summarize this podcast, NFTs bad, could yes. be better. Yep. Could be better. Hopefully they become better a thing. A lot better. Uh your shit's gonna get stolen if you're popular. Uh Marmoset, good, but why so bad? Mm hmm Fingerman, very confused. Uh people are lazy. People are lazy. Take advantage of that. Yes. And also, uh, if somebody steals your shit in a different country, you're kind of out of luck. You're, yeah, just take an L, my friend. Take an L. Yep. It's not worth it unless you have a lot oh. of connections to a lot of people. Side note. Side, random side note that you might have oh. seen because it's over the internet. Um, Don't. If someone posts a cool artwork on Twitter, don't you dare ever fucking mention the word shirt water bottle or poster all right oh oh i remember hearing that because twitter bots are mean and if 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 they see any image on twitter they don't follow fucking they don't guide these things and you say shirt bottle or poster or any other merch item like even if you don't say i want this on a shirt you just mention shirt in the tweet boom the image is stolen and it's up on a website on an image that you can buy for like 30 bucks yeah so don't do that <laughs> it's kind of like those uh facebook ads you see that are super personalized to the person mm -hmm. where it's like uh my favorite ones are like i'm a trucker from north carolina who believes in god and <laughs> drives a ford <laughs> i know exactly what we're talking about it's so funny those thing. are those are pretty great yeah those are those are my favorite thing where they just kind of scrape the info they do have on you and create a shirt about it i want to get one for me but i don't use facebook yeah no i don't use facebook yeah, for that to happen but i've seen it on uh some of my family members i'm a gamer who doesn't do anything and sits at home all the time exactly <laughs> So I just think of really stupid ones that come up, but yeah. Um, sweet. Well, that's about pretty much all the time that we have allotted. Um, this was, <laughs> despite missing a member, this was actually one of the more uh, content-filled podcasts we've ever had. Hopefully, content, just, baby. Yeah, hopefully this get better over time. Um, it seems like it flowed better compared to like the other ones, where it's kind of like... To be fair, we had we had I like yeah. To be fair, we also had like five subjects lined up that all kind of blended in together. And, and last stream we had two that didn't. <laughs> um, it was like, ah. But you yeah. need to be talking more, finger. You need to yeah, use your words. You're you're the use young your big boy words. You need to be the one asking a lot of the questions that that mainly mm. Thor and Polly, but maybe also I can answer. Come on. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Is, I'm the expert here. <laughs> so uncon. I'm the expert here. Yeah, I just, know things. Yeah, this wasn't necessarily sure like what to add. I guess just but. fucking spew. Whenever you, whenever we're talking in a call and it's not on a podcast, you're just fucking words. Yeah. No. 
I feel like that's no, kind of okay. There's a difference between like saying funny meme phrases and then like kind of like sculpture things. So, Say like, funny listen, meme phrases. Listen, I give you a dollar an hour to just entertain me. I want my dollar's worth. Oh yeah, I got this. I got this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, I was gonna like. I, don't know, I feel like. I think if I ever like saw someone they like reposted my artwork on like Twitter or something, I'd probably be like, "Hey, bro, that's a nice painting you got there." Oh yeah, totally. If I ever catch anyone like low effort stealing my artwork, I'm totally gonna do my best to fuck with them. Yeah, like I'm not really personally like I don't care if somebody like reposts it or whatever. Oh, I yeah. guess like I don't really care too much for most things as long as people aren't like trying to like like hurt people or if they're trying to or if it's just like. If they're like trying to profit off of something that I made or like hurt people, then that's kind of like where I draw the line. It's like, yo, yeah. that is not cool. I'm going to now, uh, I don't know, it'll be like the, the funny painting, it has the mouth on it that will eat you or something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've stolen your work already, Finger Man, but that's just because I love you. Dude, uh, that's just... not cool. Uh... I mean, <laughs> I've sent the boys uh, some really... of the stuff that I've done with your work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't really care about that. That's just, like, memes. I don't really care if you, like, remash it for, like, a meme. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's just fun, man. Fun. I'll, gi I'll give you $10 if you give me the Fingerman model. Just to use. I don't know. I think it's, like, kind of... It exists, but it might not at the same time. I I'll put it's it in, in a, a major motion picture. Position. How about that? Fingerman, if you give me your model, I'll put it in a movie. How about that? I don't know. That oh, don't cool. you I dare. I better not see a freaking Fingerman I, extra in the next I, movie I, I watch. I'll be pissed. Uh, I, believe it or not, audience, I have the power to do that for some reason. I know you do. That's why I'm upset, because I know you probably have enough power to sneak in a stupid-ass Easter egg in a major picture movie. I can movie. do this. Give me the model, I will do it, Finger Man. Oh, no. I promise you this. What if I just like, but what if like the meme is just like meant to die at this point? And it, no. Yeah. Listen, I'll give it a new birth. I'll give it, I'll give it new life. Just I, give me if, the model. I'll put it in a Marvel movie. How about that? Oh I'll wait until God, I work on a Marvel no. movie and I'll just like, I'll get it in there somehow. What if, what if you put Man Duck in there? If you give me a Man Duck, I'll put it in a TV show. That would be awesome. He's like, oh, Finger Man. God. Finger Man needs to live on the major motion picture. What if it? What if it's like Man Duck, but he's eating the cheese on his earrings? I think that'd be pretty awesome. Listen, I'll put it anywhere you want. Just <laughs> give me Finger Man. Awesome. Give me Finger Man and Man Duck, and I'll do it for you. Just give, give me give the him models. Give him the NFT. Give me the NFT of Finger Man. I will give you a thousand dollars for the NFT of Finger Man oh, right God, now. Oh God, no! Don't do that. Also, I, I posted a thing. It was funny, but then it was gone. It was gone. That is. Damn right it is. Now get get us out of here, Lemoyes. Get right. us to stop talking. Thank you everyone for watching. Um, we will be streaming again in two Give weeks, me Tuesday, six p.m. Oh. P Pacific Standard Time. Oh, this so. podcast will be uploaded um, in a couple of days on the YouTube channel. Um, once we can figure out how we want the intro, literally that's the only thing we need to figure out. Once we can get the intro done, we'll actually be uploading freaking tutorials. Um, <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We'll be here. There's a bounty, a thousand dollars for a model of Finger Man. We'll be here. <laughs> uh, Let's two see what happens from now. Thank you all for Am watching. Am I gonna be at a thousand dollars? Maybe. Shut Will up. I get Finger Man? Maybe. Okay. Bye.